Well, joining me now from West Jerusalem is former Israeli government spokesman Yuri Dromi, who worked under the administrations of Yitzhak Rabin and Shimon Peres. He is also a retired Israeli Air Force colonel and is now the director general of the Jerusalem Press Club. In London, we have journalist and commentator Danny Mackey, who specializes in Syria's relations with Russia and Iran. And from Washington, D.C., is Syrian affairs analyst Ruan al rajulah Good to have you all on the program. Yuri Dromi, let's start with you. So it's quite clear that Israel targeted Iranian facilities in Syria, at least that's what they claim. Fifteen killed, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, six civilians, including three children. Was it a necessary strike? Was it worth it? Well, we always uh, regret the loss of uh, lives of uh, people who are not involved, and we go out of our way uh, to avoid it. But uh, unfortunately, when you need to strike a, a target, and the tar target is situated in an urban area, uh, and this is uh, a big strategic threat to Israel, then we need to do it. And again, we regret the loss of, of lives of uh, uninvolved people. When we look at the theater of war, is it Israel versus the Syrian regime and its allies, or is it Israel versus Iran, and it happens to be in Syria? I think the second uh, option is, is more uh, relevant to the situation. We have no uh, feud with the Syrian regime uh, as long as our border is safe. And, of course, we are targeting the Iranian uh, uh, plot to uh, establish in Syria a uh, advanced uh, stronghold which will further destabilize the area uh, like uh, the one they already mm -hmm. have in southern Lebanon with the Hezbollah. So, Danny Maki, besides Iran defending Assad and ensuring Assad's survival, is the threat as serious as the Israelis make it out to be, that the Iranians have these massive installations that they have long-term designs for to use as launching pads against Israel? Well, it's a very complicated situation. I mean, you'd argue that the Iranian forces in Syria are, are plentiful and that they're scattered all across the country. They're not just in one province. So it'll be difficult to say why Israel, for example, isn't hitting targets further away than Damascus in the southeast of Syria, which is quite a small pocket in, in regards to different provinces much further away. So you'd have to argue that these areas which the Israelis are, are targeting are really minimal in terms of what potential damage they could do to Israel, because a lot of the facilities being struck are ending up with Syrian soldiers being killed. So it's a tough one to really say that Israel is directly fighting Iran in Syria when a lot of the casualties, a lot of the locations being hit in and around the capital are actually Syrian military as opposed to Iranian uh, Iranian facilities. There are Iranian facilities, but they're mm -hmm. further away than Damascus. You couldn't say that all of them are located around the capital. So you'd have to argue you know, just to what extent mm -hmm. these strikes are really minimalizing the power of Iran in Syria. I think it's very small, to be honest. I don't think they're having any real effect on Iran's capacity to use Syria as a battleground in the future. Uh, Rowan, tell me a little bit about the effectiveness of these strikes. Yes, it's um, the question of effectiveness, uh, active, the, active, the effectiveness is how much this military action is really serving a political purpose. Um, yes, it could be effective if you're targeting warehouses, ammunition, but what does it what does it serve on a political um, or political level? What is, what is Iran? What is Israel interest in, in 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 Syria in terms of Iran? Do they want to contain Iran? Do they want to eliminate Iran? Do they want to push Iran out? Uh, because it's not going to be only a question of the Iranian presence in Syria, but also I would look to Iraq. Uh, back to them, uh, due to the you know to the military action. The, the biggest and the huge, the most huge uh, um, aerial campaign that Israel conducted was in May 2018, and they actually took officially uh, responsible for that, and and they bombed it everywhere. Now it's been a year. I would ask, what's what was the political gain mm -hmm. from that? I am favoring, you know, targeting surg surgical targets for Iranian pockets, but what about the Iranian, uh, the Iranian, uh, uh, the, the the Iranian. Uh, uh, military, military camps in other places. 
So but the effectiveness is really related to the to the bigger picture. Yuri Dromi, can Israel get to pick and choose? Can it get to pick off Iran when it wants to with airstrikes and still say, well, we don't really want to get involved in the war in Syria? Well, as uh, was said before, it's very complicated. Uh, nobody can operate in Syria without... Uh, uh, bumping into somebody that uh, maybe they they didn't uh, mean to bump into in the first place, uh, because it's the it's the regime, it's the insurgents who still have uh, some say. It's the Russians, of course, and then other uh, forces. Uh, but uh, uh, Israel has no uh, reason to uh, quarrel either with the Syrian regime or with the Russians. It's only uh, uh, it, uh, Israel is only trying to do in a surgical way uh, to harm the attempts of Iran to establish in Syria mm -hmm. a uh, aggressive stronghold, which will uh, then affect not only right. Israel, but uh, probably other countries in the, in the region like Jordan uh, and others. So we try hard to do it as, as much as surgical as we can but sometimes it's very difficult to do so. Yuri Dromi, game theory, if you were on the other side, if you were the Iranians, what would you do now? Yeah, well, it's difficult to go into the minds of the Iranians. Uh, I, I, would, uh, I would take the signals of Israel seriously because uh, uh, you remember the, when, the time, when, when the Russian... Uh, plane was shut down and there was a, a, a strong Russian uh, um, uh, reprimanding Israel, etc. And still, uh, last week, uh, top Israeli, Russian, American right. uh, defense uh, official met and Israel can still uh, operate. So if I were Iranian, I would take it right. seriously. Yeah, that's interesting because in Jerusalem, the Israelis, the Americans, and the Russians all sat together discussing the region. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall in that meeting. Danny Maki, the Syrians hit back. It wasn't a massive strike. It was a little sort of retaliation across the border. Would, would the Assad regime only have done that after consultations with the Russians and the Iranians? You can retaliate, but not too much? Well, the Russians are heavily vested within within Syria, and they're heavily vested in, in first of all, keeping the peace between Syria and Israel and maintaining a level of control over this particular environment. So I doubt the Syrians would really do anything significant without consulting the Russians in some in some sort of way. Obviously, they have joint command centers in Latakia, and, and they liaise on almost every diminutive to topic or, or issue which happens in the area. Now, the main issue here is there has been a response from the Syrians, but it's not really proportionate to the level of the Israeli attacks which happened. And if you if you take a timeline chronologically of how things have occurred, since the downing of the Israeli jet by Syrian air defenses, then the downing of the Russian jet by Syrian air defenses after the Israeli attacks in Latakia, we've seen very fierce Russian reactions to these events. And that is Put, being portrayed in, in the sending of the S-300 missile system, which we haven't seen so far. And a lot of sources within Syria actually say that the S-300 isn't even online yet, so it wouldn't be participating. But one thing is certain, and if you see the statements of especially the Russians in the aftermath, that they're investigating the situation, mm -hmm. this will really reap no benefits. The Russians don't want to upset Israel or push it any further. And they're quite happy with the Iranians being hit in different areas. The Russians' main problem is they don't want pressure to be building on them from Damascus, which kind of feels that it's just being attacked purposely on you know almost a weekly level for no real reason. Right. So I think that if, if the strikes were more clearly against Iranian targets, rather than, say, Syrian civilians being killed or Syrian soldiers being killed, okay. then that would be more justifiable da from Damascus' viewpoint. Danny, address the point that Yuri was making, right? So he's saying that this is a very forensic strike and it's pinpoint and so on. And the yes, you're going to have civilians who, who die in the theater of war, but these are very specific Iranian installations being targeted. Why don't you fully accept that? But it's difficult because if you look at the area which was targeted 
that for the most part, which, which is an area called Jamraya, it's actually surrounded by about 50 different compounds being used by the Syrian army and next to residential houses. So it's very difficult to surgically strike any of these areas around a city as inhabited and as congested as Damascus, which is why if you're striking P4 airport in the middle of you know, the, the Syrian desert in Homs, you can clearly identify that, okay, it's not going to be a residential area. But in areas such as Damascus, which there's so many people there, it's really difficult to have any surgical strikes. We know that the civilians were killed through, uh, through obviously, the air defences being fired and then falling back down. But this is a risk that Israel yeah. takes every single time it targets yes, can Syria. I, because can, I, I, can I just, sure, say, can in, I just say something? Sure. Uh, look, first of all, we need to talk about the context. It's, it seems like Israel is bullying the, the whole region. It just goes uh, out there bombing uh, at will. Uh, we're targeting, a, uh, we are facing a threat, a strategic threat that the Iranians are building, not only in Damascus, not only in Homs, and Dani is right, and we're striking all these places where they, they, are, they are building their capability there. And second of all, you know, with all due respect, after uh, Assad himself with the Russians uh, uh, bombed their own people, the Syrian people, for years uh, to pick on Israel, uh, I think it's a bit ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yuri, I just want to ask you in terms of going after the Iranians, um, if the thinking is, and Netanyahu is a firm believer of this, and it's a, it's a separate topic to be debated, Netanyahu is a firm believer that the Iranians are going after nuclear weapons, right? Is the thinking right now, beyond Syria, but with Lebanon and elsewhere, now is the time to hit the Iranians before they have a nuclear deterrence? Is that the thinking? No, I, I don't think uh, the Syrians' attacks are related to the Iranian uh, atomic or nuclear uh, scheme. And by the way, we just heard Rouhani himself saying that uh, they're going to uh, enrich more uh, Iranian than uh, was uh, they were allowed in the in the in the big deal that uh, that uh, Europe is is insisting on holding. So. Uh, Israel has a big issue with Iran on the nuclear level, but these strikes in Syria are more related to the second uh, level of the Iranian uh, aggression in the Middle East, and that is a building uh, wherever, they, wherever they can, whenever they can, uh, islands of, of uh, uh, insurgency, Proxies. Uh, aggression. Right. Uh, look at look at, uh, at Saudi Arabia. Look at uh, Lebanon. Okay. Uh, and we are fighting it. Okay. Rwan Rajole is yeah. Uh, yeah uh, come in, uh, j just fold your answer into this question: Is Israel, okay. by hitting the regime, and hitting the Iranians, doing the Syrian opposition and the Syrian revolution a favor by weakening them? Um, before answering the question, I just want to make a comment about the strategic threat that Israel is seeing. Uh, and rightly so, there is a strategic threat with the Iranian presence in Syria, but I would argue it's not really the presence of uh, the, you know, the military bases or the, the, the militias, because as the general knows, you know, the Iranians are wearing the Syrian army uniforms. So there are infiltrations of the Iranian-backed militias, whether they are Arabs, non-Arabs, inside Syria. And they are actually on the borders. So I don't know how much are the Israelis comfortable that their borders, especially in the south, are really protected, because how would you know when you are bombing them from, um, from the above? So I would argue the strategic threat is not really now. It's mm -hmm. on the long run. And if I want to if I wanna do the, the game, uh, the war game, and being in the Iranian mind, uh, Iran, the Wilayat al-Faqih, has been there since the 70s, and they endured all, you know, kind of sanctions. And for the last few years, they have been controlling five Arab capitals with minimum and very cheap costs, which is, uh, you know, backing up, uh, you know, Arab and non-Arab non-state actors. So I don't think Qasem Soleimani or, you know, any, any commander, IRG commander on ground did not see in their calculations the, air, the Israelis' attacks, and they are ready for it. So I would argue that the presence of the Iranian in the intel, in the Syrian intel, in the Syrian army, you know, and the bureaucracy, and also on top of that, the demographic changes that Iran has been carrying for so long. Mm -hmm. So 
it's not a matter of opposition. Of course, the Syrian, the Syrian tragedy has played to it uh, very much. But uh, I think Israel, with those airstrikes that are targeting civilians, they're even losing, you know, um, both sides especially taking into consideration the, the deal of the century that Israel and other regional allies are trying to, to build, you cannot really promote among Syrian people that you are for peace while you are bombing, uh, you know, with no plan, with, with, with no political solution. You're just an aggression. So I think uh, Israel, in a way, is, is, is losing, that, uh, losing that message, especially, and it's counterproductive for whatever efforts are being there for the, the success of uh, the, the deal of the century, a peace with Israel. Okay. So, no, I, I, I think I, I, uh, I kind of disagree with okay. you. Okay. okay, I've got to move on, but it's been good to talk to all of you. Looking forward to having you back on the program. Rawan Rajole, Danny Makki, and Yuri Dromi, thanks so much for joining us.